All right, everyone. Today's video is going to be a bit of a different one again. Now we are doing a meal plan for getting absolutely shredded. Anyone who wants to lose as much body fat as possible and are just starting their first cut and, you know, a bit unsure as to what to eat. I did one yesterday on bulking, got some good feedback, so it's only logical we do one for a cut. And this is my exact diet, what I'm eating right now. So I currently eat anywhere between 2,000 to 2,100 calories per day. And I make sure that protein's really high. I'm getting around 200 grams. So I'm going to show you exactly kind of what I eat, how I would go about it, and kind of what you want to be splitting up your diet like on a daily basis. So let's start with some fundamentals, just like we did yesterday. Do, do, do. So number one, intermittent fast. Bit of a buzzword, but what it essentially means is delay your first meal until around 1 to 2 p.m. The reason why is because what will happen is if you eat as soon as you wake up, you essentially have longer to eat all your calories, which means if you're anything like me or like any normal person, you're going to eat all your calories before 5, 6 p.m. And then you're going to spend the evening hungry and go to bed hungry, which is not fun. And that's where cravings tend to happen. That's where we start to look in the fridge and radiant and say, well, what can you snack on? And then we never really, you know, hit our goal for the calories for that day. And we never really get our deficit and lose fat. So the trick is to delay your first meal in the morning. And we do that using coffee to our advantage. So it's 2 p.m. at the moment. I've had four black coffees. And what coffee does is it suppresses your appetite. If you don't like coffee, you just have caffeine in general. But it also means you stay really, really productive in the first hours of a day because you're drinking a lot of coffee, you're fasted, it's hitting you more, and you are getting a lot more work done. So I'd highly recommend intermittent fasting. It means if I have my first meal at two, I can have my second at five, my third at around seven, and my last one around nine. And that way I spread all my calories really evenly until the time I go to bed. And therefore I'm never really you know hungry or craving. So really, really good way to focus on getting low calories every day. The next really important one is you want to be getting protein with every meal. So because we have such a small amount of calories to eat in a day, we basically need to be getting protein with every single thing we eat. We can't be missing out on an opportunity to get protein. So what I'd actually recommend is tracking around protein. So plan what you're going to eat in advance for the day and then plan the protein first. So say I'm going to have chicken for dinner. I'm going to have eggs for lunch. I'm going to have Greek yogurt as one of my snacks and I'm going to have tuna as one of the other snacks. You fill up the calories with protein. Once you hit the protein on paper, fill the rest up with carbs and fat. That's how you prioritize protein and make sure you hit it every day. So that's kind of the eating side of things. Then we want to be getting daily steps. So the calorie deficit only really works if you're staying active and you're burning calories on top of that and you need to be doing steps to make sure that's the case. We use caffeine to our advantage like I spoke about. Ideally, you want to be getting all your caffeine before 12 p.m. So that's why I think if you wake up early, the hours from 8 to 12 are a really, really good time to be smashing the coffees because obviously you help with your calorie deficit, your intermittent fasting, and you have a really productive work block first thing in the morning. So I highly recommend it. Next one, don't cut out carbs. In order to gain muscle whilst in a def being in a deficit, you need carbs because it's very, very hard to grow muscle in a deficit. However, if you progressively get stronger each week, then you will gain muscle or at least maintain it because you can't physically keep lifting more if you're not getting stronger, if that makes sense. So you would be growing muscle. Now, the way we make sure we do this is by not cutting out carbs. If we use carbs to our advantage and actually get that kind of boost before our workouts, we'll be able to spike our insulin. And then essentially what that does is cause your body to produce glycogen, which essentially means you have more energy to lift. If you have more energy to lift, you can lift heavier, therefore you get stronger and you grow more muscle. If you don't do this and you go kind of ketosis and you just get fats in, yes, you'll have energy, but you'll have a lot less glycogen and you'll be a bit depleted and you might feel a bit worn out in your sessions. So don't cut out carbs, they are good. And finally, all natural foods. Processed foods, everyone knows this, but processed foods are not satiating. It's why a Domino's pizza, a large one, is around 2,500 calories, but still does not fill you up because they are designed to essentially make you overeat. So our goal, the name of the game with a deficit, is to make sure that we are staying full for as long as possible. And by eating really clean, whole foods, you're going you know, to feel full for a longer period of time, which means you're not going to overeat. And you're just going to feel a lot better. You are what you eat. So if you eat really clean, healthy food, chances are you're going to feel very clean and healthy. So those are some fundamentals I just want to go over. Let's go into a diet. So meal one, like I said, not food. Four black coffees, 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. That's the way I go. I'm genuinely being serious. This is how you stay productive, as we spoke about, and it means you never crave in the evenings. If you struggle with cravings, you need to try that out. Breakfast is a myth. 
fuck it off. You don't need it. If you have a coffee in the morning and you get to work, you don't need breakfast. And most of us don't even want to eat in the morning. We just force ourselves to because that's something we've been doing all our life. Once you just break the cycle and stop eating it, you realise, actually, I don't need breakfast in the morning. I just need loads of water, coffee, some movement, some work, and then we can eat after we've done all the work. That's the deal. So, meal two. Something I'm experimenting with at the moment, I like to mix it up with kind of what I eat. I don't eat the same thing every day. I might change meals around. But what I'm really enjoying at the moment is having quite a heavy protein and high in fat meal straight after I break my fast because I feel like the carbs almost make me a little bit sluggish at times. So I only want to be having them kind of pre-workout. And what I do is then have a, you know, a 200 gram steak, just a kind of normal steak you might get from, you know, groceries, Tesco's or whatever, a nice avocado and four eggs, you know, that's looking about 700 cows, 70 grams of protein, really gives you that natural energy boost. And it's just a really great way to get that protein in the morning. It's been a long time since we've eaten. So really, really good meal and uh, sets you up for the day. It's uh, a meal you want to be eating to keep you fucking superhuman. If you have this, testosterone gets boost, you feel good. I'd highly recommend it. So, you know, I go steak, eggs, avocado, black coffee. Great way to break the fast around 1 p.m. for myself. So that's meal two. Then we go on to meal three and what I like to do is train around 3 to 4 p.m. So I'll have a pre-workout snack, something that's quite light and a little bit heavy on the carbs. So but I'm getting that quick kind of release, uh, release carbs for energy. And you get that through honey, blueberries, raspberries and an apple on top. But like I said, we need protein with every single meal. So what I would do is have 250 grams of Greek yogurt, put some honey in that, some berries, have an apple on the walk to the gym. And, you know, you're getting your protein there. Really nice meal. Honestly, love it. Uh, quick to make. And if you want to take it a step further, you can even put protein powder in that Greek yogurt to get even more protein. I just don't eat any protein powder at the moment because I want to keep everything kind of natural. I feel like protein powder is not really necessary. I'm, I'm going to show you about this video because 200 grams of protein without any protein powder. So right now we're at 70, 30, that's 100 grams before 3 p.m. Now we hit the gym, smash an absolute session, and then we come back and we get a post-workout meal in. What I would normally go for is something like, you know, 250 grams of rice, that's one of those microwave packets, a can of tuna, I put some sriracha sauce to spice it up a little bit. Really nice meal, 400 calories, again, 30 grams of protein. Tuna's really, really good, it's really low in calories and high in protein, so again, another really easy way to just get protein without having, you know, chicken four times a day. Um, if I'm not having tuna, maybe I'll have something like smoked salmon. Um, there's plenty of options here. You could go for kind of turkey rashers, which I used to eat all the time, or chicken sausages, but like I said, they are processed and we do want to avoid them. So, you know, you can't go wrong with some tuna and some rice, really healthy meal. Now we're at 130 grams of protein and around 700, 300, 1300 calories. So all that's left is the last meal of the day. And this is where we're going to get the bulk of our protein. So high protein dinner, 700 cows, 70 grams of protein. That should say protein, my bad. But 250 grams of chicken breast, that's a chicken breast roughly. Two to three tortilla wraps, some grated cheese, some sriracha. I have some fajitas. What I do is eat chicken nearly every single day, but I mix up the carbs. So what I might do the next day is change the wraps for rice, or I might change the protein to steak. You can mix it up. Essentially, once you know what you're going to have in a in a daily basis, you can just basically start mixing up the meals and have different meals at different times so you're not getting bored. But then again, food is fuel at the end of the day. I, I mean, eating these foods every single day because I enjoy them. So the trick is to set yourself up for success by just eating the foods you enjoy. If you eat the foods you enjoy, then there's no reason why you can't eat them every single day. I think that's a really good tip. Don't romanticize food so much, you know, just fucking get it in. Make sure you, it tastes nice and you, you're eating, but you know, don't be spending loads of time fucking cooking and all of this and thinking it's really hard. It's really not. Just work it all out mathematically like we're doing here and you'll be sweet. So that's kind of how dinner would go. And what that does is chicken breast, gets me 70 grams of protein. So right now I'm at 200 grams and I'm at 2,100 calories. I'm going to have that like 8, 9 p.m., get to bed 10, 11, and I've hit all my calories for the day. Keeps me really lean. And because the protein is so high and the calories are so low, what's happening is I'm guaranteeing I'm maintaining muscle mass, at least maintaining it, maybe even gaining it, depending on my intensity. And I'm losing weight through a deficit, which means I'm only losing fat. If I'm gaining muscle or maintaining muscle at least, and I'm losing weight, and I'm not losing muscle, I must be losing fat. So that's the way you want to set it up. And what you want to make sure is that you're training in a high intensity manner with this increase in protein. Because obviously, if you're stimulating enough growth and you're getting the protein and you're 
physically getting stronger, you're tracking this on an app and you're getting stronger every week, you are gaining muscle. And if you are losing weight, you're losing fat. So that's a really, really important thing to understand. And that's kind of how I'd run it in terms of meals. That's what I'm eating every single day. Absolutely love it. Enjoy my food thoroughly. Now, I'm just gonna do one more slide here with some extra tips. So, as I said on the bulking video for anyone watching, you basically wanna have calorie dense foods when you're bulking because essentially, they won't fill you up as much, but they will carry a lot of calories. So we can just reverse engineer that and basically avoid all of those foods. So if you remember, I was talking about pasta, oats, because 100 grams of pasta has around 500, 600 calories, but that won't fill you up that much. 250 grams of rice has 350 calories. Do you see what I mean? That's double the volume, less calories. So you kind of want to be avoiding those foods. And, you know, the foods to have are kind of fruit and veg, really, really low in calorie, but they will fill you up. For example, if you were to have a whole broccoli, right, it would be 150 calories and that would fill you up. Broccoli is quite a lot of food. And the reason why, because it's all very natural and really good foods to have. So I would have that fruit, veg, rice, as we spoke about, lean protein sources. So chicken is not high in calories, but it's very high in protein. So you want to be using that to our advantage because our goal is to get as much protein as possible with the least amount of calories. Then you've got your turkey breast, you've got tuna. Steak's a little bit higher because of the fat content, but still, nevertheless, you can get different cuts, um, which are fairly leaner. I think medallions are really, really low in fat, um, so I do recommend them as well. They taste nice. You've got protein powder there if you need it, so I would I would recommend having it as a backup, right? If you have a very busy day and you can't cook all these meals or whatever, have that as your backup. It's 30 grams per scoop, you know. You can get 60 grams out of one shake by double scooping. That five, six eggs... That's what I'd recommend in a day, honestly. I don't really differ from any of that. I wouldn't be having stuff like oats or cereal just because it's a lot of calories and, you know, you're not getting much out of it. Like I said, we need protein with every meal. So these are kind of the best foods I'd recommend. Avoid those calorie-dense foods. Olive oil is a big no-no because, like we said, 120 calories per spoon, no good. I'm a little bit against bread. I feel like it bloats you a little bit, so I'm kind of leaving that out at the moment. Um... But I would just kind of try and avoid these foods, maybe dairy if you want. But honestly, if you can just have these um, and focus on kind of what I was eating and just running a similar split, you'll, you'll get good results. I'm seeing really good results. And I think I started my cut on January the 1st. Today is 26th of February and I'm down quite a lot. And I'm getting really lean. So something's definitely working. Now, some extra tips. Low calorie oil spray, so you can get that fry light. It's like zero calorie spray, really, really good. Because obviously if you're cooking four times a day, you don't want to be using olive oil because you're going to forget about how much you're putting in and you're not going to see much fat loss because you're eating loads of olive oil without realizing. Even that, or low calorie butter, butter's quite good for you. So, you know, just kind of overestimate it a little bit and realize that it's pretty good. Now, this is a rogue one, but... Potentially use nicotine to suppress your appetite. Now, I don't have this problem because I'm a bit of a, I've got a bit of a low appetite. I don't really get hungry all the time. But let's say you find cutting really difficult. Now, you could get one of these bad boys, a little Elux vape, because they definitely suppress your appetite. So if you vape already or you smoke or whatever, you can use that to your advantage. I wouldn't recommend starting to suppress your appetite, but just remember it's there. However, nicotine is proven to be good for you. So you can get like the, the nicotine chewing gums maybe maybe that's a good bit of advice but i don't know i'm not scared to say that because it is, it is just a fact so take it you know with a pinch of salt do as you will but it does work um so that's that if you overeat for whatever reason or you over drink you, you know if you're tracking this every day and you go over your calories just run all right so say i eat 2.6k calories one day which i never do because i'm quite disciplined when it comes to my food but say I go over by 500 calories, well, you reap what you sow, go for a run the next day and burn 500 calories. It's that simple. Calories in, calories out. So make sure that you're keeping the balance. Just because you overeat one day doesn't mean it's game over. You can just burn the calories the next day. It's weekly averages, no matter. Track what you're eating every single day, find out your daily averages and stay consistent. Again, don't eat before 2 p.m. You're just going to find it very, very hard to not crave in the evenings and diet's going to go out the window. So don't do that. Protein with every meal. And the last one that makes your life very, very easy, boost testosterone and get your sleep. If you're getting your sleep, you're going to help build muscle, lose fat. And having high testosterone makes you more anabolic. It makes it very, very easy for you to turn stubborn fat into muscle. So it's in your interest to focus on that. But that 
is genuinely everything I could give you on how to get shredded. I've got a couple guides here on YouTube already, but this is a bit of a more in-depth one showing you kind of what I eat. So if you are struggling, you don't know what to eat, here's some good examples of what I eat on a daily basis, some good tips, and please take it, use it, steal it, get absolutely shredded. Summer is fast approaching, 26th of February. We'll be going into spring soon. And, you know, no one wants a bulky dad bod physique when you're on the beach. You want to be looking shredded, 6 to 7% body fat, and this is the way to do it. So, if you need any help, you know where to find me. But that's today's video, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.